All right, here's uh, here's the next thing I'm working on. Just kind of give a little preview in the last video. And uh, I guess I don't know what to call this. I'm just gonna call this the uh, heavy side flow videos. Um, quite quite simple. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about construction. Um, doing a lot of the other stuff that you normally do too with you know generating magnetic flux and getting other coils to light up. But uh, let's talk about this guy, some of the experiments I plan on doing with it. Um, while well, I'm kind of pausing this guy and waiting, uh, waiting to uh, get a little more information on that. So, yeah, here we go. So, what I'm attempting to kind of recreate is, you may have seen uh, from Don Smith and um, others, he had this this plasma column, and then he had a kind of collection system. And uh, as far as I understand it, the idea behind it is to capture what they call a heavy side flow, which is this extra energy um, outside of the normal pointing vector. Now, if you're not familiar with the pointing vector, um, you can go to Veritasium uh, on YouTube. Uh, he kind of got the whole electrical engineer and engineering community going crazy uh, last month because he he did a video uh, being provocative of course on the pointing vector and all the other guys electro boom and everyone else did a bunch of response videos to it but uh, the basic idea is that the energy uh, within any electric circuit actually doesn't flow within the wires it's pretty common knowledge for electrical engineers it actually flows outside the wires and um, the basic way to find uh, the direction of the energy is to look at the direction of the electric field. In this case, these wires, the electric, basically pointing out. And then curl your hand in the direction of the magnetic field, and your thumb is then pointing in the direction of the pointing vector. So we're actually looking at collecting the energy as it kind of rotates around these coils. And that's why these plates are perpendicular um, in that direction. If you were going to do it over here in the plasma column, you might have seen um, from Don, and I know uh, Rich Friedrich uh, did a video on this. Um, the streamers here, the plasma streamers, you can look at those as a, almost a wire again. Electric field is pointing out, the magnetic field is pointing around, and that's why this heavy side flow, this pointing vector is going up and down, and his plates are perpendicular. Um, in that direction. So that's the purpose behind this. Um, now the construction that I built to, to test this out, um, pretty simple. Honestly, I'm, it's just a, a coil um, with a capacitor in series, um, just so I can get decently high voltages like you see here, um, 1.72 kilovolts. And my input is a little over six watts to achieve that. But this arrangement allows me to slide in and out these plates, use different plates of different materials, different thicknesses, different combinations, and see how that affects my outputs. So let's talk a little bit more about... So these plates are pretty simple. This is just a sheet of mylar, four mils uh, thick. I got, um, in this case, I got a zinc foil on one side, copper foil on the other. Um, I'm not connecting the let's say silver side whether it's aluminum or zinc to uh, anything they're just open and i'm only tapping off the, the copper now um, one thing that you'll find is if you do um, ground any of these plates you might be able to see there is an effect generally on everything um, that's going on here and keeping it open seems to be the better path. But now the how you can collect the energy, I guess we can do it a lot of different ways. I do have kind of a Avramenko style on, on some of these. Others I'm running them through the transformer. And actually in some of these I'm running now through transformer to um, an Avramenko um, uh, combination. And I'll do a different video more on this um, just because these wires are a complete mess at this point in time. And keep in mind, now all these other coils are generally resonantly tuned, so all these other guys are lighting 
lighting up. Um, so we're connecting that magnetic flux. Now, you're like, okay, why? Well, what's so special about this? Well, what's special about this, if, if you get this coil moving, and you get this coil in a very steady state, um, and, and this coil arrangement and that capacitor, it actually takes me about 10 minutes of letting it warm up to get into a steady state, where at, at that frequency, it's quite stable. But what's interesting is, okay, right now I have all the lights lit up, and I have 12, I have the, the six watts, right? If I disconnect one of the sets of arrangements, I still have six watts. I'm not in any way, and I'll reconnect it, I'm not in any way affecting my source. Everything is absolutely stable. And so that begs, okay, how many plates can I can I connect here? How much energy can I get off of a single plate? What's the best design of a plate to give me the most energy? And so on and so on. And that's what I'm going to focus on in a lot of the future experiments. What would be really cool? Well, at 6 watts, at least with this configuration, I have 24 potential plates. Maybe more if I use the inner slots. Do the math, 6 divided by 24 gives you 0.25 watts, potentially, per plate. If you can get more than 2.5 watts out of a single plate, or if you can collect more than 2.5 watts, then you're in an interesting space. I will say, you can see right now, I only have, of these five plates, I only have three of them actually connected. These are 5 watt light bulbs, they're not fully lit. But generally, experimentation on running them DC, you need about 0.8 watts to even get them to light. You need about, on AC, uh, AC you need about 0.5 watts um, or so to get them to light. Um, these are definitely not fully bright. I would put them in the 1 wattish range, but it does look like there's ways to actually get and collect a lot of this energy without affecting the load. And that's what we're going to focus on or I'm sorry, without affecting the source. And that's what we're going to focus on uh, moving forward. And maybe there's some different ways we can drive these. Maybe there's some, um, uh, I think there's a whole host of arrangements to actually try and collect, uh, collect the energy. And we'll do a lot more experiments around that. So just a couple other tips. Um, if you want to try something similar, um, I already mentioned one, you, you got to let this guy warm up and get to kind of a steady state. Uh, maybe maybe the materials you're using, the capacitors you're using, you don't have to do that as much. When I start this guy up cold, it starts out at a resonant frequency of 627 kilohertz. It moves over time as it warms up 40 kilohertz. To where it finally gets into what I would call a stable state, where I really can't I can't do anything to to affect um, to affect it, and it's it can be a little wobbly. If you go too high, it might fall off a cliff. If you go too low, it might fall off a cliff. So you have to kind of watch it and, and get it there. If you're going to have a different size of coil, um, depending on let's say the flux density, and remember the magnetic flux lines are moving in kind of this direction, electric flux lines are pushing out. Um, what I've seen so far is the flux density actually seems to have an effect on, on the plate. And versus these skinny coils and this larger coil, this larger coil I actually had to get this cut out in here and go onto the inside of the coil as well to get a similar uh, type of output as I'm seeing with this guy's. So um, as I experiment more, I'll also learn more um, about this. And you know, at some point in time, we might step up to this big uh, plasma column. Um, but uh, at least right now, this gives me a lot of opportunity for experimentation and learning. So if there's any uh, feedback uh, from, from you guys, I'd love to hear it. Um, it's kind of a fun little thing to experiment with. Um, so still learning. Thanks for your time, and we'll talk to you later.